Br'er Rabbit was out in his garden picking carrots. He heard Br'er Fox puffing and panting as he made his way up the path, so he rushed inside the house and slammed the door shut. Knock, knock, knock. Br'er Fox banged on the door. There was no answer. Knock, knock, knock. Br'er Fox banged so hard on the door that Br'er Rabbit thought he was going to break it down. Still, there was no answer. Eventually, Br'er Rabbit answered in his weakest voice. Who's there? Is that Br'er Fox? Oh, I ate too many carrots this morning and my stomach's hurting. Oh, run and fetch me a doctor. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that, Br'er Rabbit. Mrs. Meadows asked me to invite you to their party. It's today. A party just won't be a party if you're not there. You've got to come. Br'er Rabbit still kept the door of his house tightly shut. You can't be too sick to come to a party. No one's ever too sick to go to a party, said Br'er Fox. Come on, you got to come, said Br'er Fox. I just can't, said Br'er Rabbit. And so the argument went on until Br'er Rabbit gave in. In the end, Br'er Rabbit said, All right, I'll come to the party, even if I am very ill. Actually, I'm so ill that I can't even walk. You'll have to carry me all the way there. All right, I'll carry you. You can't be very heavy, said Br'er Fox. But you might drop me. No fear of that. Mothers have let me carry their babies, and I've never, ever dropped one. All right, then, I'll go with you. But only if you carry me on your back. That's the only place where I'd feel safe. So Br'er Fox agreed to take him on his back. And I'll need a saddle. I just can't ride without a saddle, said Br'er Rabbit. All right, I'll get you a saddle. But I can't get on a saddle without a bridle. Br'er Fox was getting fed up with this, but he still went to fetch him a bridle. And when he had gathered all his riding gear together, Br'er Rabbit opened his door and sauntered outside. Br'er Rabbit climbed onto Br'er Fox's back. Are you sitting comfortably? said Br'er Fox. It's just dandy, said Br'er Rabbit. So off they set. When they'd ridden but a little way, Br'er Rabbit raised one of his feet. What are you doing? said Br'er Fox. I'm shortening the left stirrup. Then Br'er Rabbit raised the other foot. What do you think you're doing now? Br'er Fox asked. I'm just shortening the other stirrup. But what Br'er Rabbit was really doing was putting on his spurs. So off they set again. Br'er Rabbit dug his spurs in. <laughs> he shouted as they sped through the woods and the forest. When they got close to Mrs. Meadow's house, she was standing with her girls on the veranda. Yee-haw! cried Br'er Rabbit as they sped past. Br'er Fox dreamt of sipping ice-cool lemonade on the veranda, but Br'er Rabbit wasn't going to let him stop until he'd had a good ride. At last, Br'er Rabbit let Br'er Fox slow down and led him back to Mrs. Meadow's house. Was Br'er Fox glad to have a breather? Mrs. Meadows and her girls just couldn't stop laughing when they saw Br'er Fox puffing and panting. Br'er Rabbit stepped down from his horse and coolly kissed Mrs. Meadows and each of her girls on the hand. Then he gave a deep bow and said, My dear ladies, didn't you know that Br'er Fox was a riding horse for our family? He's not quite as nifty as he used to be, but there's still some life left in the old nag. 
<laughs> that was the funniest thing I ever did see. <laughs> oh, he sure can ride. Oh, thank you for entertaining us so well, Br'er Rabbit, said Mrs. Meadows. You're a very fine horseman. That's because I was riding such a fine horse. <laughs> <laughs> Laughed Br'er Rabbit. And as Br'er Rabbit watched Br'er Fox puffing and panting in the corner of the garden, he had an idea. Do you have a long piece of rope, Mrs. Meadows? Said Br'er Rabbit. One of her girls went to fetch him the longest piece of rope they had. They all helped Br'er Rabbit tie Br'er Fox up nice and tight. Now you won't be able to get into any sticky situations, he said. And he left Br'er Fox tied up while he went into Mrs. Meadows' drawing room and drank lemonade all afternoon.